let's look at uh, the idea of a double reflection over parallel lines. So this is in the realm of composite uh, transformations where we're looking at doing more than one in a row. So maybe to translate, then to reflect, maybe rotate, and then translate, whatever the case may be. We're going to look at the specific cases of double reflecting, so two reflections back to back, over lines that are parallel to each other. So it might look something like this, reflect over N and then over M, the point A. One of the misconceptions students have is that the location of A is probably what determines whether it goes to the right or to the left. Some students say, oh, A is here, so it's going that way. A, you'll see, will move depending on the order that you do things. So keep an eye on that. Let's take a look, though, at uh, this particular one we'll start with. This says reflect over N first. Remember that this notation, you work from the inside out. So we reflect over N first. So uh, it would just simply reflect to A prime here. And then we take that image and reflect it over M. So we reflect it over the M value now. And so I'm going to reflect that to this location. Now a couple things I want you to notice. Because the lines are parallel, a reflection moves in a perpendicular distance. And so of course this will continue to move in a straight line. A translation. So because we're perpendicular to this and we're perpendicular to this, we will move in a straight line or direction or, as you know, what's coming is a translation. Now one thing let's also talk about about this translation, not only of course we're moving in a uh, direction and a distance, we'll talk about distance in a minute, also understand that the first reflection would reverse orientation and the second reflection would reverse it right back to the original. That's why it can be a translation because translations preserve orientation. So the other thing that's taking place is how far does this point move? Well, take a look here. The distance between these two parallel lines is a single dash and a double dash. I don't know how long that is, but that's what they come to. Notice that the total distance is two double dashes and two single dashes. Exactly double. So whatever this distance is, we'll call it D. The translated distance will be 2D. It'll be exactly double the distance between those parallel lines. Now, let's talk direction here for a minute. We reflect it over N first and then M. N first, then M. That's why it went that direction. So let's keep our point in the same spot and perform the same reflections but in the opposite order. So here's our A now. We're going to reflect over M first. Now M is here, so it would reflect to somewhere, let's see, yeah, about here. Now you say, whoa, this is kind of weird. Well, we're way over here. Now we will reflect over N second. So we're this far away, so we're going to be that same distance away, probably here. I'm roughing it in, but see what happened? You see how uh, A to A prime ended up going to the right? It would be exactly, again, two times the distance between the parallel lines and would move in a rightward direction in this case because it went over M first, then M, so it would go that way. Now this is easy when our lines are vertical or horizontal. Uh, the same thing would happen if, uh, if we were interested in, you know, reflecting over lines that are like this or lines that are like this. A double reflection, again, uh, let's say might move us 
Uh, again, do you see how it moves us in that line, in that segment, that distance, because they're both perpendicular to the, to the parallel lines? Same thing would happen here. It would reflect it and then reflect it. There's our translated distance. So let me quickly summarize. It's a translation, that's what a double reflection over parallel lines does. It will always be a translated distance, double the length, the distance between the two parallel lines, and it will move in a perpendicular distance to those parallel lines. Now let me just do something a little more specific with you. Let me show you how um, I could do this. Let me show you here for a second. Here is uh, two lines, x equals 2. Let's pretend we're on a coordinate grid and x equals 5. And let's reflect over x equals 5 and then reflect over x equals 2, our point A. I don't care where point A is. It's going to do a translation. Now, how big will the translation be? It's 3 between them, so it's going to go 6. All right, now what direction? Well, if the lines are vertical, x equals 2 and x equals 5, it's going to go over the 5 first and head towards the 2 next. So it's going to head left. So the result of this is a translation left 6. I didn't even need to know where A was. I know where it's heading. Let's show you another example. Let's say our lines are horizontal. This is y equals 1, and this is y equals negative 5. And let's reflect over, I don't know, uh, y equals negative 5 first, and then y equals 1 second. So what will be the result? It will be a distance of 6, so 12. It's going to be a translation of, uh, let's see, of 12. Now, is it going up or down? If we start at y equals negative 5 and then reflect over y equals 1, we're heading upward 12. This would be the resultant translation. Beautiful stuff. Keep your eye on distances. Keep track of x equals lines or vertical. Y equals lines are horizontal. It'll help you a lot here. Good luck. I'll show you a couple things on the, uh, on the Elmo here in a minute. All right, let's look at a couple of double reflections over parallel lines. Again, uh, the importance here is to understand notation. So this says we're going to reflect over X equals 1 first and then reflect over X equals negative 4. So again, I'm going to just, for sake of time, just only move one of the points. I'll move A. So 1, 2, 3 to get to here. 1, 2, 3. Here's A prime. Now reflect over uh, x equals negative 4. 1, 2, 1, 2. And here's our final resting place for A. Now one thing you, I want you to notice is that the distance from A to A double prime is, let's see, so 7. 8, 9, 10, what is the total? 10, isn't it? Yes, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Notice the distance between negative 4 and 1 is 5. So the distance between our lines is 5, but the total translated distance is uh, 10. Actually, I am going to do all of the points because you'll be able to see the translation. 1, 2, 3. 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So it lands here, and then it would reflect back to here. So B double prime would be here. C is one, actually would be the same distance as B because they're lined up. So it would be right here when it's all done. So let me just connect here, and you'll be able to see quite easily the translation that's taken place. So there it is. So this guy slid a total of 10, right? That's the total slide to the left 10. 
because it's a translation of 10, the distance between the two lines is 5. Now, I could have done that yeah, without the diagram. I, I know that the distance between them is 5, so a total of 10. It went from the x equals 1 to the x equals negative 4, so I knew it was going to go left 10. So it was actually this translation that just moved every point. Let's look at another case. I'm going to go a little quicker here because I, I can uh, look at the materials and kind of figure it out. This is a double reflection, y equals 2, so starting uh, at the 2 first and then uh, reflecting over the negative 2. This, of course, is a distance of 4, and we went over 2 first, then negative 2, so it's down 8. This would be a translation that will move all points down 8. Now I could do the reflection up over, let's see, uh, over y equals 2 first, and then reflect it down. But I actually know what's going on, so this is going to go down 8, which would land it here and b prime here, and a, let's see, a prime would be down 8 here, and this will be the resultant answer. You see, I'm using my knowledge now and not the physicality of the reflecting. Let's do the same thing. This is the same question, but in a reversed order. This is going to go over the 2, negative 2 first, and then this. So we are going to go up 8, so the entire shape would move up 8. Um, without now any sort of diagramming, we can kind of quickly cut to the chase, just like we did here. Here's how I would handle this. Negative 2 to negative 5. So maybe drawing out the two lines would be helpful. Negative 2, negative 5. So that's going... Uh, downward, and this is a distance of, of 3, so the resultant value would be down 6, because it's a distance of 3 heading in a downward direction, it would be down 6. Here we're going from x equals 1, let's say this is x equals 1, x equals negative 2 would be this direction, so this would be a resultant translation of 6 to the left, because there's 3 between them, and it's going from 1 heading into the negative 2 direction. This is double reflections over parallel lines.